In this Blender tutorial, I'm going to show you how to make a simple ball rig that you can use to animate squash and stretch. So this can help you make your balls that you animate look more realistic by having them react to the environment. So here I have a basic cube in Blender, but I'll press X to delete it. Then I'll press Shift A and I'll get a mesh and a UV sphere. So here I have a UV sphere. If I press N on my keyboard, then I can come over here to item. And if you notice the location of this is on the Z zero plane. So I'm going to change this to one. So now it's at one. And then I can press control A and then I can reset all transforms. Then I'm gonna click the X direction right here so I can see the cube from the side. And I'm going to add a texture. So I'll click on material properties, click add new. Then I'm gonna call this material ball texture or ball material. Then I could change the base color to something like green. And then to see this, notice I have to click up here to the material preview. But instead of just a green ball, I wanna be able to see what's happening. So I'm gonna change the base color by clicking on this little yellow dot. Then I'm gonna change it to a checker texture. But notice that the checker texture doesn't look very good. So I'm gonna quickly go to the shading node. And then here is the checker texture. And of course I can change the texture to something a little bit cooler. So I'll use yellow and then maybe let's use this pink color here. So now I have this checker, but I need to add something new. So I'll click down here in the node editor, press shift A. Then in the search bar, I'll type texture and then C. And I'm gonna add a texture coordinate node. Then I'll drag from UV to vector. This tells Blender where to put the texture. And it looks a lot better, but notice on this side over here, it's got this big blank spot. So if I just change this to six, it'll look a lot better. Now it's evenly divided. Notice what happens if I change it to seven, it gets uneven. And if I go to eight, it's all even again. So this way now we have a beach ball looking checkerboard on our ball. I'm gonna go back to the layout view and then I'm gonna click once again on X. So I'm looking right to the side. So now I need to add an armature to be able to create a ball rig. So I'm going to press Shift A and then I'm going to select armature. The armature comes in, but it's way down here on the bottom and it's behind the ball. So with the armature selected, and you can tell the armature is selected because it's highlighted in your collection, click on this orange properties manager icon right here. And then down under viewport display, click in front. Now we can see the armature, but notice that it's only half the size of the ball. So we can come over to the dimensions. And again, if you don't see this items here, press N on your keyboard and it'll toggle it in and out. So I'm gonna make this two meters. So now I have the Z here is scaled up to two meters, which is great. So now we can go ahead and create our armature. So the way to do that, is to click the ball, then hold the shift key and click the object. Now you can let go of shift. Then we're going to press control P to parent. And then under armature deform, we're going to click with automatic weights. And that's it. Now if I click the armature and then under the scale, I can click with my left mouse button and drag left to right. Notice that it makes the ball go up and down. Great. So I'm gonna put this back to two because that's the size of the zero ball. And then I'm just going to hide the armature in both the render and in the viewport. So let's go ahead and add some keyframes. So I have the armature selected here and then I'm going to go to frame one, but this is a 250 frame animation. So I'm gonna change that to 30 by clicking down here. And then I'm gonna use this little slider to just increase the scale of the animation timeline. So that way I'm not looking at a lot of extra frames. So here we go. And I'm on frame one and I'm going to right click on location Z and I'm gonna insert a single keyframe. And then I'm also going to go to scale Z and insert a single keyframe. Then I'm gonna to move to frame 30. And so this is start one and 30. And I'm gonna right click on Z, insert a single keyframe right click on Z, insert a single keyframe. And notice nothing happens. 
So what we need to do now is go ahead and move somewhere, I don't know, around frame five, six, seven. I'll go to frame six, and then I'm just going to drag the scale down so it's squashed a little bit, and then right click, insert a single keyframe. Then we need to move forward somewhere around 15, 16, 14, and then I'm going to drag on Z and stretch the ball, and I'll insert a single keyframe. Then we'll move farther along and somewhere around here, 24, 25, 26, click on Z and type in two. Now the ball is perfectly round and right click insert keyframe. If I press play, you'll notice that the ball squishes down, stretches up and then settles. This is great. Now what I'm going to do is drag my timeline slider back to the beginning. Then I'm going to go forward in the animation in Blender. And then as the ball squishes down, I'm looking at the ball rig, and then I want to put a keyframe right when the ball rig pops back up to full size. So right now it's a little stretched, so I would say around frame 10 on this one. And then I'm going to insert a keyframe on location Z. Then I'm going to go forward, and as you can see, the ball is stretching. As it's stretching here, I'm going to go all the way up to find out when it is a single ball again. And on this one, it's frame 24. In order to move the armature, we need to be able to see it in the viewport. So that way we can select the armature. And then I'm gonna press G, then Z, move the armature straight up. Then I'm gonna right click and insert a single keyframe on Z. So now let's press play and see what's happening. So now we have the ball bouncing, which looks great. but it, does, it looks a little unnatural. So there's a couple things we can do to improve this. So if we click on the little printer icon over here, the default frame rate on Blender is 24 frames per second. This is actually pretty slow, so we'll change it to 30 frames per second. And so now if we play the ball, it'll have a little bit more frames in between, so that'll look better. But the next thing we need to do is go to the animation tab. So I'll go to animation and then under the view down in the lower left here, I'll click view toggle graph editor. And so here we have the graph of our object. And so I'm going to twirl out object transform and I'm going to hide the scale. So here I have just the up and down of the object. And so if I press play, you'll notice when it's at the top of this graph, that's when it's up all the way. And so what I'm going to do is click this keyframe right here at the bottom of the graph, right click, and I'm going to go to handle type free. And then I'm gonna move this handle up so I have more of a slope. Now watch how the ball looks as it leaves the ground. You see how it has a little bit more snap when it jumps up? Now we'll do the same thing to this last keyframe. I'll click the keyframe, right click, go to handle type and break it. Then I'll click the handle and I'll just move this up. So now I have this nice smooth arc. Now if I press play, we can see that the ball is moving up and down. So, and it has this snapping action, which looks a lot better. Then I can hide the armature. And now I have a ball that is bouncing and it has a little bit of ease in and ease out on that bounce. Hopefully you're able to use this ball rig to animate a ball and have it bounce around. Happy 3D modeling.